I would call to order the Village of Westmont Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for July 9th, 2014. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Van Buren is here. Commissioner Pill. Commissioner Fidesco. Here. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Roy. Chairman Richard. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, if you would please all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I got you all standing, you gotta be sworn in. So anybody that's gonna give any testimony for or against, you gotta be sworn in. So if you please raise your right hand, I swear that any testimony I give this evening shall be the hope, truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Thank you. Thank you. I would ask that you silence all electronic devices. And when you do come up to the podium, there is a sign in sheet if you would sign in, please. Okay, what do we got? Next item of business is approval of the minutes of our June 11th meeting. May I have a motion, please? So move. Second. Motion by. Uh, Thomas. Commissioner Thomas, seconded by Commissioner uh, Fidesco. Question on the motion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Fidesco. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Van Buren says yes, and Chairman Richard. Yes. Okay, the minutes as uh, presented are hereby adopted and approved. Old business. Any commissioners, any old business? We'll move on to new business. New business, planning and zoning item 14019, Pot Valley Sandwich Shop regarding the property located at 19 West Ogden for the following. A, zoning code variance request to increase the number of allowable signs. B, zoning code variance request to increase the maximum gross square footage of signage. C, zoning code variance request to display more than five signs on the premise. D. Zoning code variance request to display an illuminated window sign. Uh, before you start, uh, would you, uh, since you are asking for a variance, state law requires that you uh, allude to the hardships. Okay. Uh, for uh, this you're uh, being put under for these different variances. Okay, the main reason that we're asking for the variance is the way that the building's gonna be constructed. The primary entrance is gonna be on the south elevation which faces on the, to the interior parking lot. So the rear elevation which faces the main thoroughfare Ogden, um, Ogden is like the rear of the building. So we would need signage to kind of identify that, not only from Ogden Avenue for vehicular and pedestrian traffic, but also on the interior parking lot, so customers knew where the entrance was. Okay, would, uh, what uh, is the hardship for the gross square footage? If the, if we were only gonna use the 77 square feet for all of our signage, it would be so small that it would be illegible because there, it says pot belly, sandwich shop, and drive through on there. So if we divided all of our signage up by 77 square feet, it would be like just over 10 square feet per sign, which would only give us a very five by two foot linear so Are you sign. saying most people would drive by and wouldn't even know you were there then? Correct, yes. Okay. Thank you, if you would proceed, please. Um, okay, uh, Potbelly is a, a national company and they have national branding standards which includes their wall signs, their drive-through signage, awnings, monument tenant panels, and interior they illuminated are, signage. Yeah. I'm gonna do all of them. Um, gonna do all of them. Our customer's north elevation is only 26.63 square uh, feet from the main Fair thoroughfare, okay. Ogden Avenue. Um, the signage on this elevation will allow for optimal vehicular and pedestrian exposure. Uh, we are requesting the interior puck sign be illuminated as this is Potbelly's standard. Um, all their int uh, interior puck signs that hang in the window are illuminated and part of their general signage package. If you could, could you put some of the uh, pictures of the sign on the uh, display so the home audience can see what uh, sure. you're alluding to?
So the south elevation right here, uh, this is what faces Ogden Avenue. Or I'm sorry, this is what faces the interior parking lot. Uh, this is the smallest of the signage that we're asking for, um, including the, uh, the illuminated puck sign. Um, here is what would face Ogden Avenue. Pretty much the same layout, it just has a little bit more square footage. It's ten, it has an additional 10 square feet for that. Um, we're asking for the larger sign, obviously, on um, Ogden Avenue because people are moving faster there. It's going to be better if the signage is larger on that elevation. And this is the signage that we're asking for on the east elevation, which is where our customer's drive through window is going to be. Um, because it's so close to Ogden Avenue, this uh, side elevation will be seen by westbound traffic a lot easier than if we just had the awning, which uh, is the company's uh, standard awning with the logo on it as well. Um, the last piece that is included in this that we're asking for is the Popelli drive through tenant panel on the monument sign. There's going to be four tenant panels for all four tenants that will be in that building. And the electronic message center is going to be shared by all four tenants. So that uh, square footage was divided amongst all the tenants in addition to what's currently here. Um, if I may, before you get away from the uh, monument uh, sign. Yes, sir. Uh, the address for the uh, establishment, that's going to be visible from the east and the west. You're going to need that address on both sides. Oh, right here, you mean? Yes, correct. So just change that. Okay. Um, we're asking for additional number of signs so we can draw the attention of the vehicular and pedestrian traffic um, that's needed so that Pop Bellies will be a thriving village in the, or will be a thriving business in the village of Westmont. Um, we're asking for the illuminated puck sign because this is just a national branding standard as is the logo on their awning above the drive through window. Um, let's see. Here's kind of our site plan if you have any questions. This is our tenant's space right here. And here's Ogden Avenue. And right here would be the tenant's entrance and their drive through would be right here. We're hoping for signage here here and right here. This is the property's monument sign, so it's important that we have something on the westbound side, right, on the east side, so that westbound traffic can see it easily instead of getting right here to the monument sign and passing it. <coughs> if they've passed it, most likely they're not going to turn around and come back. Um, we're hoping that the variance will be approved because it will serve to enhance the economic welfare of the community, and Pop Valley will be providing a valuable service to busy families and individuals by, by clearly identifying our new location, more people will be served. Do you have any more questions? <laughs> oh, I'm sure we will. Okay. <laughs> okay, is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on this issue? Seeing nobody raising their hands, we'll close the public comment. Staff. Uh, the shopping center development was approved in early 2014, but the developer did not have a formal site plan at that time for the signage. Uh, he proposed a large amount of space for signs, and staff asked Potbelly to decrease from that general amount as it wasn't well, well received by the planning commission. The sign contractor complied with the request and uh, proposed a smaller amount than was generally proposed previously. And then um, staff asked them to further decrease the size of the rear wall sign because it's in the back of the shopping center. Um, we also asked for the monument sign panel to be um, an ivory color to match the rest of the panels rather than a bright yellow, which they had previously proposed. So that way the ground sign will have a more cohesive appearance. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll start with the uh, commissioners. Commissioner Thomas. Um, do you, this would, this building that you're moving into would not be your first choice, I would imagine, just the way it's laid out in, in that, because they're, they're, they are definitely throwing you a curve, <laughs> curveball here about, um, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that you're working with staff to not get everything you want, and, but uh, not 
be um, hurt either, you know. And uh, and I, I think you made a great great um, presentation. I agree 100 percent with with um, you. And good luck. Thank you, Commissioner Van Buren. Yeah, I too uh, understand that you've worked with staff, that you have diminished the original request considerably, and uh, um, I don't have any problem with it. Commissioner Fidesco? Yeah, uh, you know, this is definitely a unique location, <laughs> and, and I can understand that you need more signage just for the fact that the main entrance is backside, is on the other side. I mean, it, it does make sense to do it that way for safety reasons, and for your customers' ease of getting to and from their cars. If you tried to have everything out in front and move the building back, that's still, that would be difficult. I just drove past and I was like, oh, I can see why they might want to build it the way they're building it. <laughs> yes, yes. So I really don't have an issue with it, and I'm glad these signs aren't, aren't super large. So We tried to keep within the original code as far as how the square footage was calculated for the primary frontage so we didn't want to be too greedy okay thanks uh really a question for jill mm -hmm. uh between the two properties mm -hmm. property to the east of this there's no uh it's a common drive if you would uh, do they need a fence by or has that been uh yeah i believe they're going to have a they're going to have landscaping in the median, so yeah, there's a I've, I've forgotten what we yeah we approved last week. We approved a, a landscaping plan that had um, a, cur a curb, so it keeps people from cutting okay. through now, and then there will be landscaping separating it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there was a clean out in the parkway, as I recall. Okay. The grease trap. Yeah. All right, and I also have no problem with you whatsoever, and thank you for working with staff for that. Okay, since we have a request for a variance, we need a reading of the findings of fact. If we could have that, uh, remind the commissioners that this one reading will apply to all four variances. Request for variance for Potbelly Sandwich Shop at 19 West Ogden Avenue. To increase the number of allowable signs, to increase the maximum gross square footage of signs, to display more than five signs, and to display an illuminated window sign. Criteria number one. The property in question cannot yield a reasonable return if permitted to be used only under the conditions allowed by the regulations in the district in which it is located. The rear of the proposed restaurant faces Ogden Avenue with its parking lot and front entrance to the south of the building away from Ogden Avenue. Ogden Avenue is a heavily trafficked commercial thoroughfare. The proposed signage is necessary for the applicant to gain sufficient exposure to the public along Ogden Avenue given the unique layout of this restaurant within a multi-tenant building. The applicant will not have sufficient exposure to the public, will not comply with corporate branding requirements, and will not yield a reasonable return without these variances. Criteria number two, the plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances. Due to the unique layout of this retail building, the rear of the store faces Ogden Avenue. Signage is necessary on both the rear and the front of the proposed restaurant, as well as for the drive through lane and on the landlord provided monument sign in order to provide sufficient exposure to the public. Criteria three. The variation, if granted, will not alter the essential character of the locality. All proposed signage will be tastefully crafted according to corporate branding requirements and will be similar to existing signage for surrounding commercial uses. The proposed signage will be spread across several building faces and areas of the property and will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. If you agree with these findings, please raise your hand. We are unanimous in agreement. Therefore, the findings of fact for four variances are hereby uh, adopted. Okay, under planning and zoning item 14019, I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the Board of Trustees, item A, zoning code variance request to increase the number of allowable signs. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Van Buren, seconded by Commissioner Thomas. Question on the motion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. Commissioner Fidesco? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. And Chairman Richard? Yes. Okay, I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the Board of Trustees item B, a zoning code variance request to increase the maximum gross square footage of signage. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Thomas, seconded by Commissioner Fidesco. Question on the motion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Fidesco? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. And Chairman Richard? Yes. Okay, item C. I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the Board of Trustees item C, 
a zoning code variance request to display more than five signs on the premise. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Van Buren, seconded by Commissioner Fidesco. Question on the motion, roll call please. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. Commissioner Fidesco? Yes. And Chairman Richard? Yes. Okay, I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the Board of Trustees item D, a zoning code variance request to display an illuminated window sign. So, so moved. moved. Motion by Commissioner uh, Thomas, seconded by Commissioner Fidesco. Uh, question on the motion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. Commissioner Fidesco? Yes. Chairman Richard? Yes. Okay, you can have, uh, we are only a recommending board, of course. Okay. And staff can tell you when you go before a uh, committee of the whole. Okay. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thanks. Next <clears throat> item on the agenda, planning and zoning item 14020. Manor Care of Westmont regarding the property located at 512 East Ogden Avenue for the following. A, the zoning code variance request to expand the parking lot on a, of an existing non-conforming nursing home in the B2 General Business District. B, site and landscaping plan approval for a nursing home and parking lot expansion. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Is there a sign in sheet? Yeah. There we go. All right, sorry about that. Hello, my name is Dan Maletic. I'm a civil engineer working for Manhart Consulting. Uh, we're at 900 Woodlands Parkway in Vernon Hills, Illinois. I'm here on behalf of Manor Care of Westmont, Illinois, LLC. And we're here to ask for a variance uh, to allow for a non-conforming existing use in the B2 district as it applies to the HCR Manor Care located at 512 East Ogden Avenue. The site has been an existing manor care facility for 41 years now. Uh, as it currently stands, they're having issues with parking based on the amount of use of the building. Um, I think your staff report shows very well, and I'll also throw it up on the screen, that there are some uh, parking issues where cars are having to be parked along the drive wells behind and next to the building. Uh, just because there aren't enough spaces. What we're proposing to do is to add 66 new parking spaces to the facility to help alleviate those parking issues. Uh, and by doing so, also improve the safety of the area. People won't be coming out of their cars in the middle of drive areas. Uh, and also to allow for emergency vehicles that need to visit the site to be able to get access around the site yeah, in case of an emergency. Okay, uh, again, the specific hardship uh, the that har uh, you're facing. Uh, the hardship that we are facing is that this property has been a non-conforming use in the B2 district for 41 years and has operated, been operating that way. And uh, in order to allow for our site plan improvements, we would need to uh, come in for the variance to allow it to remain a B2 district operating under the exact same use that it is today, um, but to allow the additional parking spaces to the users. Okay, very fine. Is there anybody from the public who will speak on this issue? If you... You have to come up to the podium, and if you would sign in. I came in late, so I don't know if there Okay, was I have to swear you in then, if you would, okay? Sure. 
I swear that any testimony I give this evening shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Sure, I'm ex actually just gonna ask questions. Okay. You're covered. So I live, I live in Citadel, the <clears throat> Citadel subdivision, and um, just am concerned about the landscaping proposal, and maybe you can answer that question, because there's a retention pond area that gathers a lot of water when it rains. I'm actually going to put up our landscaping plan for you. All right, the subdivision, I'm assuming, correct, is just north. It would be just north behind the wood fence over here. We are planning on not removing the retention, uh, detention basin, excuse me, uh, but we will actually be putting it into an underground storage system, um, a storage system that's been used in Gage County before. Uh, it'll hold the exact same amount of uh, detention that was in there before and will also account for any additional impervious areas that we'll be creating with the new parking spaces. Uh, and it will function with the exact same release that the existing detention basin has. Same, uh, same function, just underground so that we can park on top of it. Um, to the property to the north, uh, right now there is an existing six foot board on board wood fence back there. Uh, as you can see here, we're also proposing to add some trees to that back area to further screen any, uh, any issues with the parking lot being where the detention basin used to be. Is the board on board fence on your property or the Citadel? It's on the Citadel property. Are they required uh, to put a fence up on their property or? Um, they, they would need to have- uh, the Landscaping would be enough. Well, yeah, they could, they, could, they could do landscaping, but because the fence is on Citadel, we could add to the landscaping with additional um, evergreen screening on their side. So we could fit that in between. So you might be aware that that'll be coming down. When you say on the other side, you mean on our side of the yeah, side? Yeah, on your side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Did uh, both of you ladies uh, sign in? What did we sign in again? There There's a sheet up here if you would. I got buried by my plans up there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you. Would it be okay if I showed you some pictures on my phone that I took after the storm on Monday? Okay. This is a series of three pictures. You know, I'm pictures wondering if those would work on the overhead be. projector. Yeah, if you would set your phone down on the projector, they can zoom in on it. You know, from the control room. Okay. Sorry. Just if you could get your picture yeah, on the yes. phone. Okay. Yeah. Just kind of move it down a little bit. Yeah. That's, that's one direction. This, I believe. Okay, this, I believe, is looking west. It is. This is looking east. Yes and this is looking north. And that was just after, I think O'Hare might have gotten two inches of rain. So, do you remember about a year ago when we had that torrential rain? This was full to the very top of the retention pond because my townhome is right on the other side and it was right up to the top of the fence, I mean, to the bottom of the fence. Um, the other question I would have is, could you address lighting? 
because as you know, I was here, um, oh, I don't know, I think it was about six, eight months ago um, with some issues about the, the, the Lexus dealer and lighting and the same issues would apply. So I'd like to hear what you have. Okay, I'll touch on the, the issue of the detention basin first. Uh, with this detention basin being around for uh, the 41 years it has, sometimes they have a tendency to you know, silt in a little bit and not hold what they were designed for. I should have been more clear when I spoke about our underground detention before. It's actually not, it's not going to hold the, uh, the entire area that is currently there. It's going to hold what has been designed for and permitted by DuPage, which is more than what it currently is holding. Uh, and then it will follow all uh, Westmont and DuPage County standards in terms of detention and release rate. Uh, in terms of the lighting, we have received comments from the village uh, on the lighting. Uh, I believe the comment was zero foot candles of lighting at the property line. And we plan on working with the village to achieve that. Oh, if you have a question, the home audience cannot hear you, so if you would speak up at the podium. Could you please describe what that means in layman's terms? The, the lighting? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Uh, a foot candle is a measurement of lighting. Um, the idea is to have zero foot candles. What the village has requested is zero foot candles at the property line, uh, which means uh, there won't be a, a spill light onto the adjacent properties. So foot candles, uh, like two foot candles is like moonlight. So zero foot candles means that, you know, that would be substantially diminished at the property line. So the applicant isn't permitted to have any light spillover onto adjacent properties. So they can do that by bringing the lights down, they can reduce wattage, they can put shields. So there's... Uh, the fence is actually an existing six-foot board on board fence. So that Correct. Okay. I wonder if both um, the board and the gentleman could discuss the timing of this and when Timing as pertains to what? When the this start would, of the project or? Yes, like what What's the timing as far as your um, approval process? Is there another step that it goes through when that might be? And then when would this begin? Jill, could you? Sure. Um, following the plan commission, if they make a positive recommendation, this is sent to the village board um, probably two to four weeks later. Um, you can give me a call and I can let you know exactly which agenda it would be on. And then uh, they would vote that evening and pass an ordinance approving or denying the, um, the application. And then um, the applicant would then apply for uh, engineering permits. Um, and then that takes, you know, it can take three to four weeks, you know, perhaps longer. It just depends. And then they could start immediately following. And then if you want to discuss your proposed time schedule. Gentlemen, my name is Steve Sayers. I'm the Director of Facility Management for HCR Manor Care out of the corporate headquarters in Toledo. Um, pardon me while I sign in here briefly. Um, as far as the timing of the project, uh, we're anticipating getting through all the um, approvals, the, 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 the village approvals and engineering plans, assuming things go smoothly late fall. Um, we'll put the project out to bid again as soon as we get engineering plans approved, uh, assuming we have all the other approvals uh, along the way. and. Um, we're going to see about the, the, the price of the project. We have our engineer's opinion on the cost. 
and it's a matter of if we have available budget at the end of this fiscal year to try to squeeze in most of the construction yet this fall and early winter uh, before the asphalt plants close or if it spills over till next spring. So um, right now it's that's kind of what we're shooting for, but um, it's you know subject to plan approval, subject to bid, bids being received and being within capital budgets, uh, all trying to beat the winter this year. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we probably wouldn't start in November uh, because that's about the time when plants are closing. Um, if we can get started with excavation work and, and the, um, uh, the creation of the underground detention, uh, if, we're, if we're ready and approved by you know, mid-October or so, uh, that would be about the earliest or about the latest we would start. I'm sorry. The latest or the earliest? <clears throat> Okay. Best best scenario. Well, I mean, you might get approvals at the earliest. I would say early September, but then you would have to put your stuff early out September to bid. September, and we we need at least a month for the bidding process. Um, after that, so, so er, October. early October would be a really early estimate. Getting it in. My my boss thinks I'm crazy for trying to get it in this year yet. Um, so getting it in this fall is going to be a, a push. Yes. Um, but, you know, it's something that we're trying to do. Any further comments from the public? Staff? Um, this proposal, we've met with Manor Care a couple times about this project. Um, we've talked about a, a, several different ways to alleviate the parking um, issues. If you've been out to the site, you know that it's uh, very crowded. Uh, there's a lot of parking, um, especially to the uh, west. Um, next to the Lexus dealership, um, and it's it's very tight trying to get through the site. Um, and as you saw in the aerial photos, um, this has been happening for you know multiple multiple years. Um, so we talked about um, Manor Care's budget and whether or not they could increase the parking by a little bit and expand their um, detention area, or if they were to go fully underground and then maximize their parking. Um, this provides the availability for the most parking spaces for the entire site and should alleviate the parking problem and then allow for some overflow um, if they need it in addition to this. Um, staff would recommend um, discussing some of the parking spaces seem to be pretty tight, especially in the corners, just trying to um, maneuver in and out. And um, and then the interim parking plan during construction, um, you know, while construction is going on, where well, what, what is the parking plan during that time? Uh, we're still in the process of, of working on that. Uh, when we know we'll be working with your engineering department and planning department to uh, to find what works best for both of us. I'm sorry, I have one more question. Yeah. Are you done, Jill? Um, and we'll also plan to work with that applicant um, with regard to the screening along the rear property line and then um, ensuring that the foot candles are at zero. Thank you. Now, if you'll approach uh, podium, please. Is this uh, just a ground level? Or are we talking a multi-level parking? Uh, all the parking will be at grade. It'll be similar to the height of the parking that's out there currently. OK, thank you. Commissioner Fidesco, okay, if you will. Uh, you had mentioned the uh, storage, underground storage of the water would be greater than it currently is. Do you know what percentage greater? Uh, I don't, and that percentage would only fluctuate based on what has what we've lost since it was uh, it was built, plus the uh, the new impervious area that we're adding out there. Okay, so my next question is: um, is with that being said, and, and that the water going underground, uh, is there ability to store some water in the parking lot? as well during a severe you know, storm that say that, I mean, it's, it's highly unlikely that it's going to, to exceed the, the capacity of the storage, but if it does, can you store water in the parking lot? Well, the way that the parking lots are designed is to 
uh, head depressional areas where the storm sewer, the grates, pick up the water. Can't store. No, those depressional areas act also as, as storage on top of it. So once the uh, uh, the underground storage fills up. You have yeah, and, and it's also the, the flow exiting the storage, right. the underground storage, you know, it's not going to just go there and stop. I mean, it will no. continue to flow based on the capacity of the, the storm sewers in the area. So what I'm just trying to make note of is that not only is there underground storage, there is some capability of storing some water on top, you know, correct. And then, it, um, in addition to that, uh, with the the stormwater ordinance, a restrictor manhole is what it calls it. It, it allows a, a certain amount of flow to leave the site. Correct. Uh, they have something called an overflow weir. So if there is a very very big storm event, uh, the water won't won't just fill up on site and stay there. It'll come over the overflow weir, and it, uh, won't flood adjacent. Properties. Okay, that's that's good. And as far as the the lighting goes, are you planning on shields? I know that you're required to do the zero foot candles, but yeah, it's it's all uh, shoebox full cutoff lighting, which means uh, I don't have an example of it by looking out your window, unfortunately. But um, it's what you'd normally see at, at most uh, retail areas, where it's cut off, where the light won't be thrown sideways; it'll be straight down. Okay. Very good. That's all my questions. Thanks. Commissioner Van Buren. To, I guess I would address this to you, Jill. Mm -hmm. To your knowledge, has uh, the, the, the photo showed that the, the, the uh, retention area being pretty well surcharged, but to your knowledge, has it ever run over into the Citadel? I mean, into the property of the Citadel? I, I'm not aware of that, no. So actually, it, Okay, go ahead. I, I was, well, when um, the neighbor showed the photos, I, I was thinking that the detention area was acting exactly as it's supposed to. That's what I would say. Right. So th so it's good that it did that because it didn't run off. It, 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 Absolutely, but they put asphalt. Correct. But they, but they are required to compensate for what they're losing and what they're adding. So, so that's part of the whole permit process. That's, that's, that's all I have. Commissioner Thomas? Uh, the, the pictures uh, concerned me also, um, but the, the um, explanation. She, now, the, the uh, lady said that that the pictures came when there was only two inches in O'Hare, so so it wasn't like there was a hundred-year storm or anything like that. But but again, like Jill said, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do: hold it so it doesn't go into the neighbors and uh, plus you you're saying that the, the new system um, will improve on capability and you don't know how how far this system has deteriorated yeah, since it's not yours and and you can't go in and see um, so but you still have to work with um, the village engineer and get everything okay so that, um, and we're well aware of, the, or that department is well aware of the, the flooding um, issues in this village. And so, um, good luck. Thank you. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Um, the stormwater, you allude to a weir that would overflow. Uh, where would that overflow? To the North? Uh, it overflows into the underground storm sewer system. If I don't remember right, I think there's around a 36 or a 48 inch storm I'm not sure. drain back there on this side of uh, the Citadel's fence. Okay. And I think there's inlets along in there where it's after their berm. Okay. The storm, the water then will drain out by gravity, or will it be pumped out from the underground? Gravity. Okay. When I was there today, looking at your uh, parking lot from the west, about 15 feet in, there was a looked like an inlet 
on the west side of your uh, retention basin. Is that where your water exits? Because the grass looks like it was pushed into you, like you were collecting water from somewhere else. So you're saying at the... the you know the, the kind of a metal grate that they put to keep debris, large yep. debris from going in? Yes. Uh, there is a, a restrictor manhole currently there that helps the basin function as it's supposed to. That's located at the northeast corner of the this site. This would be the, the west side. That would be, uh, that would be a, a release from the storm sewer on site that fills the detention, if that were the case. So there's, there's storm sewer on the property that drains to that detention, drains what's existing. Okay, because it looked like it was heading straight east underneath the parking lot of the auto dealership to the uh, west of you. That's why I question it. Uh, would it be helpful if I showed you the existing utilities, how they're laid out? Sure. You know, I don't have them. I don't have them on me currently, but I can explain based on the site plan what's happening. Please do. So the water is running away from the building, uh, both to the, uh, to the west and to the east. There is a line of storm sewer that runs here along the uh, the west side. There's also a line that runs along the east side. Both those lines pick up, the release into the existing basin. Well, then perhaps that's the the storm sewer that I saw then going into your basin. Okay, well that would make sense then. Um, the only other uh, suggestion I had, I had talked to Jill on it before as per lighting. If there would be some way we could perhaps mount lighting down at about a six foot high, if there's poles that would be not quite so high. So you've got less chance of light spilling over into the backyards because there's three houses immediately north of you. Now they're, the foliage is very thick right now. <clears throat> but in the winter time, when all the leaves are off the trees, you're going to uh, you know, have more of a chance of light spill over. So if you could look at something like that. Yeah, we will look into it. Then the only other thing I had was I noticed you got a pod stored on that property. Got a permit for it? Be nice if you got one. Okay, that's all I have. We have a request for a variance. If we have reading of the findings of fact, please. Manor Care of Westmont, 512 East Ogden Avenue, requests for a variance to allow an expansion of an existing non-conforming parking lot. Criteria number one, the property in question cannot yield a reasonable return if permitted to be used only under the conditions allowed by the regulations in the district in which it is located. The nursing home upon the property has been in existence since 1973 and has long experienced a parking shortage with resultant congestion and safety concerns due to overflow parking. This use cannot address these safety concerns and yield a reasonable return without this variance. Criteria two, the plight of the owner is due to unique circumstances. The variance is requested to remedy a parking shortfall and cure a safety and congestion concern. This variance generally would not be applicable to other legal non-conforming uses. Criteria three, the variation, if granted, will not alter the essential character of the locality. The additional parking will be consistent with surrounding commercial uses and parking lots and will be accompanied by new underground stormwater detention, landscaping, and fencing. As a result, the proposal should improve the character of the surrounding area and address safety concerns caused by the current lack of parking. If you agree with this, please raise your hand. We are unanimous in agreement. The findings of fact for a variance are hereby approved and adopted. Under planning and zoning item 14020, I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the Board of Trustees. Item A, a zoning code variance request to expand the parking lot of an existing non-conforming nursing home in the B2 General Business District. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Fidesco, seconded by Commissioner Van Buren. Question on the motion. A roll call, please. Commissioner Fidesco. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes, and Chairman Richard. Yes.
Okay, I would entertain a motion to recommend approval to the Board of Trustees item B, a site and landscaping plan approval for a nursing home and parking lot expansion. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Thomas, seconded by Commissioner Van Buren. Question on the motion, roll call please. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. Commissioner Fidesco. Yes. Chairman Richard. Yes. All right, sir, you have our recommendation for approval and staff can tell you when you go before the Committee of the Whole, Board of Trustees. Good luck to you, sirs. Okay, next item on the agenda, Planning and Zoning Item 14021, Green Healing LLC, regarding the property located at 772 Burr Oak Drive for the following. A, special use permit request to operate a medicinal cannabis dispensary facility in the M Manufacturing District. This uh, item is the petitioner is requesting that it be adjourned. Uh, continued. Continued until our next meeting. So I would have uh, entertain a motion to uh, continue this item till our next meeting. So move. Second. Motion by Commissioner Thomas, seconded by Commissioner Van Buren. A question on the motion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes. Commissioner Fidesco? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Chairman Richard? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> That's all we have on our agenda tonight, staff. Any? Uh... Yes, we got some uh, responses back from the Village Board regarding their availability for a joint Plan Commission Village Board meeting. And um, the likely date looks like Wednesday, uh, July 23rd. So if you could mark your calendars and then we will, it will probably be at 7 p.m. and we'll let you know um, further details as we get them. I look forward to it. Me too. <laughs> any civil commissioners, any comments? None? Okay, before we go, I hope to see everybody at the Taste of Westmont this evening. And uh, I hope you keep me busy while I'm in the beer tent. This weekend. This weekend. This weekend. So it's That's what tomorrow. I said. Oh, okay. Well, I <laughs> turn out will be light. <laughs> I just want to get the ball rolling. <laughs> be at the beer tent. Okay, this weekend. I hope to see you all there. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Van Buren, seconded by Commissioner Fidesco. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.